Welcome back to a Thursday Buckeye Talk. It's a Buckeye Retalkables. It's Doug Maurice and Nathan Baird. And Nathan, I don't think I've ever said this before on a Retalkables. If you are someone out there who did not live through this initially, who has not gone back and rewatched this, who has limited awareness of the game we are discussing today, who maybe knows it from the history books, but doesn't really have any kind of emotional attachment to this game, stop listening. We are doing the 1998 Ohio State-Michigan State game. Ohio State's loss as the number one team in the country to Nick Saban and Michigan State 28-24. Nathan, I had never watched this game before. We're certainly aware of this game. Mm -hmm. I had not watched it. It's a tough watch. It is a tough watch. And that is not our intention typically here on Buckeye Retalkables. More often than not, I would say we probably are about like 80-20 on wins to losses for doing this. We try to make it a historical podcast. But I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, it's for the enjoyment of of our listeners. (laughs) <laughs> Wins are more fun to remember. It's like if you're in history class, you're like, all right, kids, once again, let's run through all the wars that our country lost. I don't know. You kind of spend a little more well, time on the wars your country won. If you don't know anything about this game, stop listening. It's painful, Nathan. Yeah, I think just because you teach World War One doesn't mean you don't mention the Alamo or whatever. You know what I mean? Like once in a while, you you take one and you have to you have to learn from the loss. And the but last it's not like about... it's, it's like it's not like hey, you don't spend fifteen minutes on beating Hitler and then do the Alamo for a month, right? You really lean into the whole beat Hitler thing, and it's like yeah, once upon That's a true. time, you know, we were outnumbered. What do you got to do? That's true, and I think we we have essentially done that. If you remember the last retalkables we did was 2016, Ohio state, Michigan. And that was sort of a, I mean, it was a victory, but it was kind of a flawed victory. So, and, and what did it tell us about Ohio state? And that's why I suggested we do this game actually. And I was trying to remember today. Oh, good. Wait, let's put that right out there. This is Nathan's fault. This was my idea. This was (laughs) a thousand percent was my idea. And Doug was on, I was, I've been trying to remember today what I saw that triggered this, um, because you were on vacation off buying French made Pizza Hut, and I was, I saw something. It was a tweet. I think I saw something related to Nick Saban reminding. Did you see like a, a baby bird fall out of a nest and die? What did you see? Did you see a squirrel get hit by <laughs> no, a car? Was, I believe you know it what? was Nick Saban specific, what I saw, and <laughs> reminding. And it was an allusion to the fact that he had basically oh. probably ruined the the John Cooper era at Ohio State with this win, with this upset win. And what this meant then for Ohio State going forward and what it meant for Nick Saban going forward is an interesting inflection moment in time. But the other reason why I thought it was interesting was because we have been over the last several months, really since last Thanksgiving, a couple days after, talking about Ryan Day's legacy and how it is unfolding at Ohio State and how big this coming season is for how we will think of Ryan Day in the long term for any number of reasons. The the, the losing streak to Michigan, the last year of the four-year playoff and the kind of the needle you have to thread there. And this was the game in some ways, I think for a lot of people, um, helps define the John Cooper era. There's the losses to Michigan, certainly, but so much was on the table this day at Ohio Stadium. And if Ohio State finds a way to move the ball in the second half, maybe that national championship drought would have ended sooner than it did. So there are a lot of things that we can pull in to make comparisons because we don't just want to have this exist in a vacuum, but there's a lot of stuff that made me think, oh, what about this? What about that? As we relate it to the current Buckeyes, as we relate it to other games in Ohio State history, this is November 7th, 1998. Michigan State is four and four and two and two in the Big Ten coming into this game. Ohio State is undefeated number one. They are eight and oh, they are five and oh in the Big Ten. Nathan, they are absolutely steamrolling people at this point in time. I added it up. 
Yep. If I can find it, they uh, did you did I I did the math? Did I do the math on? They had outscored opponents three hundred and six to seventy two coming into this game. That's an average score of thirty eight to nine. Their margin of victory in their first eight games, 17, 49, 21, 19, 41, 30, 26, and 31. They didn't have a game closer than 17 points, Nathan. Yeah. And I also would almost like to apologize for the previous retalkables that you mentioned. The 2016 Ohio State-Michigan <laughs> game where Ohio State won and we were like, oh my God, what is wrong with this team? They looked terrible that day and won. And now watching this... Ohio State looks awesome, and they lost. Like, they didn't yeah. play awesome, but there are just things that happen that you are like, I, I, this 1998 team is much more modern day, much more related, I would say, to the Ohio State football we see right now than the 2016 version that had a running quarterback and had Curtis Samuel as a one-man offense. There are dudes on both sides of the ball for this Ohio State team, and they sling it. So there, like, there is a through line, I think, from Ryan, from John Cooper to Ryan Day, and the way you go about your business, the kind of talent maybe, and the way you want to play football that is much more reminiscent of Ryan Day than what Urban Meyer, how he relates to Ryan Day, just in terms of the way the Buckeyes go about their business on a Saturday. This, this did not feel old to me. It, it is a long time ago. And one of the things that happens here in this 1998 game, they reference a couple times the last time Michigan State beat number one Ohio State, which was in 1974. And so that's 24 years earlier. And now we're 25 years removed from this game, right? So it's, and it's more like 1974. That feels like a long time ago. But I mean, this is a long time ago in football years, Nathan, but it's a very modern feeling, I think, Ohio State team. Just like in the – I think there's a lot of guys that you could pluck off this Ohio State team, drop them on the 2023 Ohio State football team, and they'd fit in. I think all of that is true. There definitely was still, though, an offense that you know really loved its fullback and um, used a – made some – some questionable decisions, I thought, in 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 some key spots. I found myself several times during this game typing five letters into my notes, and it was WWRDD. What would Ryan Day do? And mm. it was uh, the way that they just approached. I think both in in broader concept that was true, and then in a couple of key moments, the way that they chose to play offense that was true. But to go back to just how good this Ohio State team obviously was, I want to go back into the schedule that you you were talking about. That season, we've talked about this year being kind of a tough schedule because they play Notre Dame on the road, and we think Western Kentucky is not uh, abysmal, and, <laughs> and they have some some Big Ten games on the road. Well, this Western season, Kentucky probably has one of the ten best quarterbacks in college football. So yeah, that's it. Right, but but this year they open the season. At number 11, West Virginia, win that game by 17 points. Week three, another non-conference ranked team. They have to beat number 21, Missouri, beat them by 21 points. And then week four, Big Ten opener, number seven, Penn State, beat them 28 to nine. And then they win four big straight Big Ten road games by 26 or more, and three of those four were on the road. So, yeah, I mean, this is a team that wasn't just um, winning by accident or um, – or having a favorable schedule, like maybe you would look at like the 2019 Ohio State team, as strong as it was, the schedule was so favorable. This was a team that had the talent and then was meeting the challenge, like week to week to week was really just just pounding through people. Whereas Michigan State that year was, it, it, it this, micro, this Michigan State team though, I think served as kind of a microcosm of the way that middling teams beat Ohio State, which is, you're 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 better than your record. You probably have at least a win on your schedule that should make people pay attention. They had beaten number ten Notre Dame that year, even though they were four and four. And you've probably got an NFL talent that can make a difference, probably on offense, but somewhere. And your coach maybe is um, better than people understand, or or isn't, or is is on his way there. And that obviously was true of Nick Saban. So uh, this this game, I think there's just so much about 
the past 25 years of Ohio State history that this game falls right in line with. There's also something that happened in this game that I was like, oh, that's a right, that's a Nathan Baird thing. It's it wasn't what's the Ryan Day thing that you wrote down the five letters? W W R D D. W W R D D. So mine is W W N B S, which is what would Nathan Baird say? And I have a particular <laughs> one that we will get to in a minute. When we come back, Great. we'll start the categories from this 28-24 Ohio State loss to Michigan State in the 1998 season. Next on Buckeye Retalkables.